right there. Hello and God bless you. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, this is Ellen Mongan, host of Go Tell the World. And my co-host today is June Council, the wise council. How you doing, June? Good to see you. Good. It's a good day, Ellen. A good day. We're going to talk about um, this certain item of the body that's the hardest one in the world to tame. Who could guess the, the name of it? You know, June? <laughs> What's the hardest part of the body to tame? The tongue. What is it? The tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so June's going to lead today. We're, we're reading this great book together. We've read it many times before. It's a life-changing book. It's right here. I'm doing it with my left hand. So we, can you all see? It's called 30 Days to Taming Your Tongue by Deborah Smith. And we're going to take the book as a guide for the next 30 times we're on air together, whenever we can get on together. We have busy schedule, we're busy ladies. And then we're going to try to work on it until we come back the next time. We're on the air we're talking about. So today we're going to talk about, what are we going to talk about today, June? What areas of the tongue? Lies. Lots of lies. Areas. Oh, lies. Oh, yeah, sorry. Lies. lies. And, you know, Ellen, I think we should talk about truth, too, the truth. Oh, what I do think you think? So. Should we start with truth and then yeah. with lies? <laughs> we know that there's a lot of lies going around right now. Do you, do you think? I watch the TV and I think to myself, Pat's oh, always going. Oh, for heaven's sake. Pat's going like this liar, liar. I'm going, in my mind, I'm going, they can't hear you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. men talk to TVs and also cars in front of them. It's, it's comical. Some women do the same. So we're going to talk about lies and truth. So June's going to start us off. There's a lot of scripture that you can find if you Google the word truth. We're so blessed to have a computer that will take you right to it. Yes. Well, you know, uh, it's it's good for me to tell the truth, and I know that. And at this age, I've learned that's the best thing to do. So um, I'm always looking at how, how, what did I, when did I lie? Um, and I want to say positive things. And I don't think that's a lie because I said today's a good day, but it's been a hectic, busy day. <laughs> um, so we say positive things, right? We say positive things. And to bring us into grateful attitude. And I don't think that's a lie, but we need to always look at, are we lying to ourselves? I, I think I lie to myself more than to anybody else. And don't you think this, too? How about you, Ellen? I was going to say, when we were young in the charismatic renewal, we dropped like a pickle jar on our foot and we go, praise God. And then I got older. I went, wait, that hurts. I praise God, but my foot hurts. That's how we, do you think that's how we turn around from the, from the lie to ourself? Like it did hurt. And then the truth was, yeah, you know, praise you, Lord. If we win, we praise him. If we lose, if we're having a good day, we praise him. Having a bad day, we pray. That's how I think I get around it. How do you get around it? The whole lying to yourself and saying. The same thing. I. I try to say yes, but by the same token, I I need to look at uh, if I'm if I'm lying to myself about myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I need to look at if I'm lying to you. Um, and um, you know, am I being deceitful? Mm -hmm. Or flattery. Is it a half truth that I'm saying to you? Yes, exaggerations. And the other question is, what are my motives for flattering you? Mm -hmm. What are my I know, motives? I know this one lady, June, my one of my friends, and a lot of times I'm asked to come on board. Like, what do you think of this dress? Or put it, you know, get rid of clothes in closets, and that's my gift. I like fashion. And um, she put on this dress and I said to myself, I won't lie, you know what I'm saying? And so I didn't say anything. And um, I said, why don't you ask your daughter? And the daughter went, she goes, how does this look on me? And the daughter went like this. Do you like it? And I thought it was the perfect way to get out of it. You know, do you like it? And then the woman goes, no, I really don't like it. And she was able to do that. Another time I asked told another lady, she was trying things like, oh, I really don't wear a blouse and a skirt that don't match because I'm short and it makes me look shorter. So what do you think? And she almost started to cry you. You can't do that with everybody. The truth can hurt. <laughs> so that's okay. This person I got not tell the truth, just go, I like the color. You see what I'm saying? It's very important to yes. know your family. Yes. We can cry yes. later. 
something, but we gotta say, how well do I know them? Like, I love pink on you. And I'm not only gonna talk about fashion in case y'all think I'm getting distracted, I'm not. But I love pink on June. I, I don't know if she wears a lot of pink. I said right away, oh, the pink is good. But if it didn't look good, I would go, I would say mm, something else. I wouldn't draw attention to what, I don't like to lie. Bring it up. What would I say? No. Okay, I don't want to you, lie. You wouldn't bring it up. We can avoid saying things. We do have to sell, have self-control. Um, I have to watch myself. Now, mm -hmm. I've got a friend. Her name is Anne. She is so good at how she says things, but I'm not. Okay. And I was just telling her, she asked me, how would you say that? I said, you no, know, not like you do. And we both laughed, you know, because we know each other. I, I am, I can be blunt, straightforward and to the point. And I don't want to hurt anybody, though. Thank God I'm not like that. Of course, when I was in high school, I didn't oh. care. <laughs> so, I, didn't want to talk about, I did want to talk a little bit, bring that in, June. Don't you think it's a girl thing? Because that's exactly what I was thinking about. Yes. In high school, I probably was Mean Girls. You know the movie Mean Girls? I probably was that person. I probably I would never do that now. But in high school level, maybe some of you teens are listening. You don't want to really be, watch the movie and let, with your mom's help because some parts are not as clean as I thought they were when I was watching the first time my kids. But, you know, I was so mean to like even boyfriends and then girlfriends. I don't know. I probably would have been the category of mean girl, but I would never do that now. We transform in Christ. Don't you think we transform each day from truth? Well, don't you truth. think that don't you think that we uh, sandpaper each other smooth? We learn, oh, Ellen didn't like what I just said. Mm -hmm. And when we love each other, we try to change. We do. And that's why this book is so helpful because you'll be the first to tell me. We both found it. I probably found it or she did. We discovered that it does change you. And then things that we've been praying about happened because we had to change within and speak without. And look, dude, I told this joke before, June. I'm sure you love it. My little grandbaby went to school, which was in K K four, not K five, and the teacher had them all alive. And she said, "Now, kids, don't let the words out of your mouth because she wanted to be quiet." And I go, "She said what? <laughs> don't let the words out of your mouth." So Pat and I, being ourselves, humorous couple, and the opposites attract people. We often will say, mm, Pat, don't we go like this. <laughs> don't let the words that we are. And then we know not to let the words out of your mouth. You know what I'm saying, June? With a couple or a good friend, you're going to have signals. Like, you know, June's going to enter us into each subject. <laughs> I would just yes. shut up. Yeah. No, but don't you think yeah. we have those catches in our spirit? Like, I'm not going to say that. Something pops out of your mouth. And you go, okay, I shouldn't have said that. Because you know, you see a tear rolling down someone's eye. And you go, okay, clue in. Yeah. Just Right. Yeah. All right. So mm -hmm. we're on the first one, which is we said talked about truth. And now we're going to talk about what is a half truth or what is a deception truth, a deception. Exactly. And deception, I think, I think in me, if I'm deceptive, it's because I don't want to pay for the truth. I don't want to, I don't want to tell that naughty little thing. If my husband says, did you do that? I'm not going to tell him. I'm going to say, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> because I don't want to be blamed. You know sure. what I'm saying? And that's kind of like I too. I mean, <laughs> you know, there's a fine line between deception and lying. Um, and these things are things that we do have to look at in ourselves, because here's what it says. Whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. Ooh. And uh, that's 1 Peter 3.10. So um, if any, whoever would love life. It's important for us to know how important these things are for our happiness. That's right. And, and how well, to do them correctly. And one sister had a really good word that really is sunk in my soul, June. You know, some, someone says things that it was the three of us where couples get together. <laughs> and she's more the one that says the, right, the word that's like, not correction, but kind of like wake up call. She said, we are held accountable for every word that comes out of our mouth. So I guess... Don't let the words out of your mouth. 
<laughs> just sum it up. So June, go on. So what do you think about yes. that? How do you how do we avoid how do we avoid being that person that doesn't I am I'm the opposite one because I I always got so used to like it was it's you the woman that did it. I just go, oh it's me the woman. But usually it's not. So I go, no, really it's you. And I do we're free in our we're talking mostly about the tongue, but a lot of times the tongue is most used to hurt in marriage or to help in marriage. So a lot of times Pat and I will go, well, it's you, the woman. And I go, no, it's you. And we joke, because God told me one time, if you didn't do it and you say it was me just to make the other guy you know, lift the burden, then you're wrong to even say, yep, it was me. So you have to say, no, this time it was you. And be free with your mate or your friend to say, really, I was the one that said that or did that. You know how that goes, because you might want to be, if you're my personality, yes. I take the blame just so I don't hear like it's when you get mad. Anyway, so hey, we're all we're all deceptive in some ways. You see it mostly in children, June, that you go, okay, <laughs> cookie jar and took the cookie and the kid with the cookie crumbs on their face because it wasn't me. And you go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I think that's something that's important too, because I don't know about you, but I can feel when somebody's lying to me. I and you. I think other people do. And and you know what? We're talking about respect here. Okay. Right? We're talking about respecting each other, um, mutual respect. And um I think sometimes, Ellen, we don't think that we should say it because we don't think the person can handle it. Mm -hmm. And if they know we're doing that, how does that make them feel? Sure. That makes them feel like that. that Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I said, I have certain people that I depend on to be the discerners and the truth tellers, because those are the ones that if you have toilet paper on your butt, they're not going to say, I'm not going to say anything. You know, they're going to say something. And I have certain ones like that. Then th those same people, some do tend to be more of a exhortator than an encourager. So I have other people that are my encouragers because you just take a heavy yeah. balance of the exhortators. <laughs> Sometimes the Lord is it, has it not said it to the person, going back to what you said, hasn't said it to them because they're not ready to take it. And then anybody, he tempers them. And then may four people say it in a week and they go, whoa. It must be me. I hate plus cookie. There's crumbs all over my face, you know? So he gives you a waiting list. He does give you a waiting. <laughs> if God sat there and told us all the things that are wrong with us in one day, we would destroy under the pillow and never come out of the bed. You know what I'm saying? We put our head on the pillow, lay there and go, my life is over. Do you remember who was it? Was it Peter? This go like, I'm a sinful man. Just get away from me. And we are all that Peter. And we all think that we're not. We all think that, well, I'm not a sinner. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. And um, something that our priest said to us okay. Sunday um, was, this is interesting. St. Teresa, there were quite a few people that didn't like her. Not St. Teresa, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Mm -hmm. so, and she was a saint. Um, and she had a lot of women under her. Um, so... You have to be truthful when you're when you're dealing with women. And so you're going to have a lot of people that don't like you. And you've got to make sure that you don't. Um, you have to always remember this. One, the truth sets you free. That's right. That's right. It's I love that. Yeah. And you can almost say yeah. it to yourself. Don't you think the truth sets you free? Yes. You could say uh, one guy, Bob Garrett, he's a, he's an elder in the, in the charismatic renewal here in Augusta, the Ali community renewal. I mean, the Ali community. And he always said, um, someone, when someone corrects you, you can say, thank you. I'll take that to prayer. Then it's not saying, no, it's not me. It's you, the woman. <laughs> I'll take it to prayer. And you have to take it to prayer. And sometimes God will show you. you don't you think he'll show you how, especially if you have something, you say, that person does this or that. He'll always show me how I do this or that. It doesn't matter what this or that is. All of a sudden, I'm doing it. <laughs> I think, That's not me. I yes. Yeah. However, however, um, I'm going to share this because this just happened to me yesterday. Okay. Okay. Somebody calling me on the phone and uh, reprimanding me. Okay. Uh, almost yelling at me. And uh, after 20 minutes, I said, okay, 
I am sorry, but uh, I'm hanging up now. <laughs> now that one, I don't think you need to take to pray. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah, no, no. I don't no, think no. you need to take that one. Because... Um, Unless she's your spiritual director and you went to her for advice, I think you have to win favor to correct. Oh, always. Bob Gary used to say, though, he used to say, it doesn't matter how they correct you, it's fine, but I'm not, I'm a girl, so I cry. I would cry. I'm sorry, June, I would cry. I don't know the person. I would just cry. And I would say, I mean, I, I just, there's a way to do it. You can't, you, if someone's sitting, that's different. If they're just like, user correction comes to me because it's, they would prefer me to do it a different way for their convenience. <laughs> I go, Debbie Cosper is a dear friend. She's one of my four of the mountain top sisters. And she would always say, is this for your, my death and your convenience, whatever the correction is. Am I to die to yes. self so that your life can be easier? Like in other words, I don't know. I just, I, it's such a weight thing to me. Cause I'm a, remember I'm a, I used to be a person like that would, it's fine. It's all good. That person, remember, I used to be that person, right, and right, I had to learn right. that. No, that hurts just like the pickle jar hurts because your heart is a very tender thing, June. Don't you think? You don't have yes. to tame the heart. You have to tame the tongue because out of the bun is the heart, the mouth speaks. So you have to tame the tongue. But your heart is really God's responsibility, and you have to go before and say, Lord, my, I know June knows an error wasn't wasn't loving somebody. It was very important the personal love. It wasn't my husband or my children, so you don't have to even guess. And I'm like, I don't love this person. And you love the person. And she helped me just basically every time I'd call her, she'd go, I just, I just love that person. And I go, wow. And I would go with the Lord. I go, my heart's not right. And the person was living in my home. I had to go, my heart's not right. And there she is. Yes. <laughs> and then I, I had to pray for my heart to change. And I tried to work on my tongue, but God had to deal with it right. before I could speak without. Right. That's why the tame of the tongue is a, it's a book. <laughs> But it can sink in if you're listening today. This is oh, it's best. It's best to say nothing. It's best to say nothing. Um, if it's not friendly or mean or anger or those things, I think it's best to say nothing and pray. To I me, you pray for the. I think you pray for the person, um, and. You move on. You move on. Yesterday, it really helped me right. when uh, the priest said, "Not many people, or a lot of people. I'm saying I'm saying it wrong. A lot of people did not like Mother Teresa of Calcutta." See that thing? Uh, okay. Yeah. And and and, and, that, and so we don't have to be liked. We don't yeah. have to be liked to be a saint. Mm -hmm. That's a hard lesson for me. I wanted to like everyone and love everyone. And it, it's almost Thank impossible. You. It's impossible. You can. But we, but we can just say, bless your heart. <laughs> I'm praying for you. It's, That's it. Is, it. it, is, it is. Yeah. And you look at people that a lot of times there's jealousy involved. You know, like Miss Mother Teresa was a powerful saint, a mighty woman of God. <laughs> she did many yes. things. <laughs> and they just like, well, I'm just going to trash her. And that happens in life. Um, Just happens way too much. <laughs> Look at look at St. Teresa of Alice. She goes, she fell off a car oh. and she went, if you if this is how you treat your friends, Jesus, that's why you don't have that many. <laughs> we want to be a friend of God. That's why I love Jesus. her. Yes. I love her too. I love her. Joan of Arc too. She had a few words. <laughs> yeah. Life is interesting though. And exactly. Exactly. And um when we when 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 we hear the truth, it sets us free. That word yesterday set me free. Yes, that, yes. That, you know, a saint wasn't liked. And then he also talked about Jesus looking at Peter and saying, "Get behind me! <laughs> Get behind me!" Now, Peter, was there, well, Peter had a lot of people that didn't like him. Peter was the boaster. So he had a lot of people, lots of people that like Peter. See, so we're in good company, June. We we don't want all of y'all to like us and to tune in, yeah. but we are, we're doing the best we can, and God's not finished with us yet. So what did you think of what did you think that um about that? Let's go, let's go with that. Some words that are said to us set our heart free. And you can even think as we're we're all talking right now on the show and we're talking about the tongue, you can think about what word was said to you. That set you free. There's been many times in my life as well, June, where where the word sets you free. 
because exactly. they're not trying to flatter you at that point. They're trying to, to just be themselves. And then all of a sudden you go, that was from the Lord for me. So what do you, as other words have set you free to me, that does happen in the Lord. He, yes. if he like, And I want to be able to do that too. And it's usually the Holy Spirit in us that does that. And the Holy Spirit doesn't hurt anybody's feelings or doesn't do anything. And as long as we're filled with the Holy Spirit, I think that we can do that. Um, and and also to, for us to be understanding. One of the one of the things I wrote down that I'm going to read C.S. Lewis. Okay. okay, I love. He's a man of truth. I love reading his things. Okay. Um, and also Bishop Fulton Sheen. When I, I was young, when I was young, I used to think, oh, there he goes again. That's And now I look at it and say, oh, we should have listened to him. And here's what C.S. Lewis said. C.S. Lewis said, I sat with my anger until she told me her real name was grief. Wow, that's good. Isn't that's that the truth? I don't know. I, I sat with that. my anger until she told me her real name was truth. Wow. I mean, was grief, was grief. Ooh, that, that, that's sets me free. that sets me free, June, because I went to confession one time. <laughs> I was living in Florida and I was so lonely. Remember, I was so lonely and so sad because I was new, you know, and the priest, I wanted to confess some kind. I don't even remember what sin I confessed, but the priest set me free. He said like this. You don't have sin. You have grief. And I didn't know that because another, the priest had said to Pat, she's grieving at an empty nest syndrome. Well, really, in reality, it wasn't empty nest. It was really reality. Missing all my friends, my home, my life, you know, and it was hard. It was hard to hear. But my heart was grief. I go, well, then, then that's OK. We go through ups and downs. Women, we don't we, we go through times of grief and times of sinning more than we thought we did. We are always yes. sinning. But we didn't notice it. Yes. That God yes. that unveils our eyes and shows us. And then we go through times of high joy. We can't always be in high joy because then at that point, God can't mold us as well as when he's rubbing off the rub edges, like you said, with the sandpire for the people, right? He can't. Can I tell you what I saw in you then? What? Oh, when I was lonely? Fact, yes. <laughs> the fact that you were trying to make a life. Oh, I see. In place. And you missed your family, mm -hmm. but you wanted to start something new in your ministry. Yeah. I and that, that was green. And it did. And I did was... start so many things new in my ministry there. And I now I want to go back to, you know me, I wrote a book. I go, Florida, here I come. Well, because we're getting older yes. now. The laid back life is a little better for me, you know, in the warmer weather. Yes. Yeah. This yes. is, a, you see why you need an outside source if you listen. If you listen to your friends that love you, you can hear words that will heal the soul. Without which, if you are a person yeah. so you know it all and you don't want to hear, then you can't. Not on your situation, June. There's never a reason, uh, at least to me, there's never a reason right. to shout louder or bully yeah. to make someone accept your opinion. You know, you say it yes. gently or you say it once and you back off and they don't receive right. it. You're not the one. Right. That's just how it is. You mm. could be, it could be the right word at the wrong time. It could be you're yeah. not the one. And, that's what you just said earlier. Everyone's not going to like us and personalities that don't click. You, you try to work on it, but you pray for them and you spend less time to get healed on the inside because bitterness speaks louder than words. You know, it could come out of your right. eyeballs. Like, <laughs> right, 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 so, exactly. You can get taken away. And, you know? uh, Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'd like to say that St. Gabriel. Okay. St. Gabriel is gives us important truths. Okay. And if you listen quietly and ask St. Gabriel to help you with the truth, you will be comforted, consoled, and strengthened and given the truth. It comes to you. The truth will come to you. And um, I read that in scripture, but I should have written it down. But St. Gabriel is a like the truth that St. Gabriel brought Mary and she accepted it in the, with the Magnificat so beautifully. 
I would like to get to that point <laughs> where I can accept something like that because that didn't make any sense. You know what he told Mary it didn't make any sense. Yes, she she yes. didn't, she wasn't married. She couldn't have been pregnant. Um, and so I think we need to, to learn to trust more of the spiritual and our angels and saints and, and scriptures. And do you think, too, sometimes if you're really in like anger, confusion, down, and you go to the word of God, and it will be, it'll be a fresh word will pop out at you, but it won't be a new yes. word. It'll be like, Lisa, this is what God does with me, June. I'm sure he does with you. He gets sent, puts yes. some words, and I already have some. I've either, I've walked on that word, and I've walked on the water of that word, and that word was true. So he won't give me a new word because I'm so distraught. It'll be like, and I remember when I said it could be anything. It, like lately, he's been saying, be not afraid through every mess, everywhere I go, it's be not afraid. I, and I was good with that. You know, it's like, be not afraid. It's my favorite. Because I feel like I will speak my words to foreign men and they'll understand like that song, be not afraid. And I'll speak my words. And then I go, wait, after four times, I'm like, I'm afraid now. What are you trying to do? You're trying to scare me, Lord. <laughs> He's trying to cover me. Be not afraid. I'll find the Bible. I'll read an email. Then I go, wait a minute. What am I afraid of? <laughs> What's coming next, Lord? You know, we can't right. really always be accurate on all seasons. We may think, well, right. things are going well. And then all of a sudden the rug comes out and we go, I thought things were going well, Lord. What happened? It's things aren't going well. I thought it, I'd overcome impatience or whatever it is. And then I go, wow, I'm still in that spot. So be patient with yourself and surround yourself, especially if you're in a time when you're down or upset, surround yourself with Barnabas, the ones that encourage. And then a time when you say, Lord, you know what? I feel like I want to grow. <laughs> That's for yourself. And you can ask your friends. My friends and I have those retreats and we ask, what do you think I need to work on? Or and ask your spiritual director, ask your priest. If you keep yeah, going with yeah. the, the same yeah. sin, you don't need to ask that question. The same sin just keeps popping up. And we're not making light of it. It is hard to overcome a habit. It is really hard to overcome a sin because in habits, you form that over the years. And in sins, Satan would love you to do it again. See, so you have an enemy. So we have to just keep so on. I want to say this. this I want to say this, um, that in the book, I was convicted of something. Uh, every time I read this book, I'm convicted of something. And in this particular section, I tell the truth. And I don't ever do anything but this. <laughs> All the truth, the whole truth. truth. Truth, listen, truth stretchers. When I read that, and here's what it listed a truth stretcher. When you say everybody did something, nobody did it. Or oh, always, yeah. yes, it's that. not the truth. <laughs> that does and I, thought, well, I do that all the time. And I don't know why the last time I read the book, I didn't see that. Isn't it interesting how you see something different each time? So now I'm going to have to work on that. And you have, I'm working on it too, because Pat gets, that's one of his push button words. You don't say always and never. I go, well, you always do do that, or you never do do that. He gets upset with me. I thought, I'm a truth teller too, but then it is mine. You know what it is too, June? We may think we did it once and that's a lot, or they, or they did it once, it's a lot. So we have to, yeah, that's that's a good one, June, because that was a new teaching for me too. I mean, many times I go, and he read the book with me, June, at, on prayer time a few days ago. We were going to do the show last week and I was, I'd fallen, I couldn't get up, and there was other things going on. So, we have, um, we're just trying to refresh on this and also learn something. I hope you're learning something too, audience. So that's one. So that that's that goes under, does that go under half truth or the half truth? Probably half truth. The first one's deception. And the second part yeah, is the truth. Yeah, the truth. Well, it just mentioned that by itself and <laughs> it just made sense to me. Okay. Ellen, you always da da da. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Or, and I do it all the time. I just because I since I've read it, it was yesterday. <laughs> I'm a woman, so I have the right to say my, my mom would do the half truth. You know, I have to tell you because I know how much you love my mom. She would put buy clothes when they weren't really, you know, she didn't put them in the closet and then she'd put the clothes on. I learned this, I thought it was cute. And it, my dad would go, Is that new? Well, it's been in the closet for a long time. It was new, but she never wore it. See, it was, I thought it was cute, but God may not think that's funny, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was cute, no, right? No, well, in this instance, the false witness will not go unpunished. Ooh. He who utters lies, he who utters 
lives will perish. And I thought about Fulton Sheen and him always telling the truth and people just ignored him or bad mouthed him or whatever. Um, And I'm thinking to myself, that one scared me. (laughs) And I thought, you know what? We have to be more aware of when we're being lied to and find out if it's the truth. And when we're getting ready to talk, question ourselves, is that the truth? Mm-hmm. And then we get our is TV. We can watch TV and test ourselves. Because I go, I talked to him about that this week. Are we listening to the truth or not? We do, where are your sources? Who are you receiving right. your truth from? We do not receive from the word of God right. and friends that are godly, but then we have we have other things in our life like the TV. And I always have to go, am I on the wrong train? You know, I hope not, but I do. You can't really believe everything you hear. Is that what you're trying to get at, June? You can't you can't really believe all, everything you hear. And sometimes exactly. we deceive ourselves. It is hard. It's yes. a hard thing. We don't like the truth. Have you had people not like it when you say the truth? Which is why we all avoid the truth. Mm-hmm. But none of us worry about lying. It's interesting I live with because we have to really look at ourselves. We have to look at ourselves and really dig into, are you lying to yourself? Mm-hmm. Are you lying? Are you being deceived mm-hmm. by something that you've seen? Like mm-hmm. for me, women's lib years ago, I was deceived by women's lib years okay. ago. I was so the opposite, June. I was, you know, a little girl with the patent leather shoes, a bow in the back. And I'm like, I'm so glad I'm a girl, you know, what I'm saying? and I'm so glad that mm-hmm. the men are in charge. And I, I, I was to the point of June. I liked only men hairdressers, men doctors, men dentists. I just felt more happy. You know, I relate better to men like you do. And so I thought, well, I appreciate the men telling the women what to do to a point of that. I had to come out of that like too many, too submissive. My friend used to call herself submissive, Sally. See, I was this too is submissive. The thing. Any extreme, any extreme is usually a lie. Do you agree sure. with that? And, and you know what? Any agree? I think, yeah, I think, but don't you think that the other person, like if you're a woman's liver, just address the woman's liver. Cause I, my, I had mothers and mother-in-laws that were those. And I just, I was like, so no, but tell about what you feel about that. How do people get sucked into that? This is a well, good topic. Now, well, see, I was deceived uh, and believed that we could do anything. Mm-hmm. If I had four kids, I should have a career and run the house, clean, cook, and I should be a super mom and be able to do everything else, work for the church, help with all of these things until I got high blood pressure and realized that is a lie. I was deceived. So it actually affected me health. Mm-hmm. And you end up being exactly, yes. But I believe the opposite. I believe that yes. the mother and wife was the most yes. important thing I could do, and I didn't want the career. Yes, I didn't want. I was the opposite. We're we're something's the opposite. You, we're a lot alike in other areas, but that is when we are the opposite. I knew I, it. I, knew I didn't want. I knew. Did you remember the woman's livers? What happened when they woke up? And thought, wait a minute, I'm going to work. <laughs> so I go and cook the meal. And they were like, duh. This is way too much for one person. They all felt that way. They wanted yes. to do it. And then when yes. they did it, they were exhausted. Anyways, I was exhausted with my seven. And the new years. generation, the new generation saw the mistake. Okay. And they don't do it. And I love that. I think I that's think great. Good. And don't you think there's so many women out there promoting the fact that, um, like, I'm, my, you know, they're, they're so glad to be what they are. Mostly because it went over the top with the yes. whole it went all yes. the way from like, I'm a girl and then I'm gay. And then the whole, like, let's be a man if we're a woman. I, my mom would just, she would just be like, this is not true. She even could get that part, you know? So no, it's a, it's a hard thing that our world, someone let go of the reins and we, we pushed God, uh, the, uh, the anointing of God on our country, our people was pushed aside to do whatever we want. That's what my other push buttons do. Right. Like he'll say, I just want to do whatever I want. Well, unless you're two. You can't because you know what? There's, <laughs> there's order God and we have to obey the Lord. And if you want whatever you want, you're walking out from under the umbrella of protection. And that's just what we did. This is a good topic, June. It really yeah. is. I would never thought of putting women's lib in this. I honestly would have. I would never. See, I'm glad we don't. June and I don't prepare ahead of time with each other. We prepare 
in prayer in our time alone with the Lord. So I had no idea she's to bring that up, but it's actually what Pat and I are going to talk about this week, June, is about no, the, um, our what, children blessings or curses and abortion. We're going to talk about that. What so caused me? What caused me to do that and make that stupid decision? Mm -hmm. Was I wanted to be cool. I wanted okay. to be part of, part of the group. I wanted to uh, be accepted. Uh, all of the things that are not a, a, a woman of God who uh, knows how much God loves her. Because if you know how much God loves you, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. That's right. That's right. Um, That's important. And what happened... What happened to me yesterday at church was after all of that happened, I was not unhappy or upset, which I was surprised at that. That was <laughs> grace. But the other thing that happened was after all of that went on was I saw Jesus in a vision oh. and, he, and he told me, hug me. Oh. And I hugged him in the vision and almost felt the beard on his face. Oh, what an amazing thing. I can't tell you. So it doesn't matter if somebody yells at you and can't stand you or whatever, because you get rewarded by Jesus. That's right. It's, it's not always message. that way. If, you know, it's not always that way, but you know, some, you know, some, no one goes away thinking that, man, I hope Jesus hugs me. <laughs> this full beard, but you know what? It's a touch from heaven. It's a, it's a grace. It's a grace always, right? The visions or a feeling. Right. And they, and he you will know. hug you. You just have to be open and not fear. That's right. He they will. Say, they say Mother Teresa, my mother, I think it was Mother Teresa said, um, a trial makes me close enough to the cross that I can almost, it can almost help me. Is that, the, is that what it is? I, please help me on that one. The uh, trial is when you're close enough to the cross that you can, you could feel Jesus hug you. Is that the things people say? I think it's one that of the makes people. sense. I think so. Me. I think so. I love the one God's not finished with it yet, too. So people have mercy on the friends. <laughs> have mercy. Don't be like that could be you in the pit. I, I you just wonder why is this person having people wonder why I have so many um what is it, Jude? Accidents or I'm accident prone or whatever, but it really I mean, I went back in my day of like going Jude, because I just had an accident with a high heel. And I keep going back. I only fell one time on a high heel, but no one wants me wearing them. So we'll see. <laughs> no, you, just have to recount it. you have to listen and pray and you got to recount it. You know, the right. walk with Christ is a, it's you and you take his nail scar hand each day and you walk with him. You don't know where you're going. Now he's not going to tell you in advance where you're going. You take his hand each day and you walk with him and do the best you can. Now, Pat's a big believer. I say this every time in the act of contrition at night. And I've told you before, if I do that at night, I'll be up all night. So I'll think I did every sin, you know? So just to sometime in the day to examine, like, how'd that go? Where was Jesus? Did, did I take his hand? Where wasn't he? Did I walk away? And just repent, you know, to access your sins and he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all righteousness. And that helps, doesn't it, June, to say, to do that. So on that one, you had healing, you had a touch from God. And we pray for that. Yes. For another person. So I'm really free to say, Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus that every heart that we've wounded will be touched by God. Every heart that's wounded yes. us that they be touched by God. And then at Amen. The end of that, Jesus will be Lord of that. And you never know. You really do have to pray that because sometimes with me, June, someone something like that later on in my life, they come to me when they have a need. And it's something that I've been there and done that. So I could speak to them. You know what I'm saying? They'll run to you and say, those, God said right. to me, you just don't know. You don't know. You, you never know. The people that have, you have persecuted you for your faith, when they have a need, they're going right. to come to ask advice. They're going to say, what did you do? They really will. It's hard to walk with God sometimes. You, other times it's easy. You know what one we didn't touch on? We didn't touch on. This could be a favorite for women. Is the one about, um, it's not flattery. What's the one before flattery? I, I can look really quick. But it's um, the last we didn't touch on was, um, did I tell uh -huh. stories? Exaggeration. Exactly. Exaggeration. Now that's yes. that's me. I think I could do that. <laughs> the fish that got away was a really, really big one. <laughs> <laughs> Exaggeration. It's a fun kids do it all the time. I had children that told me all kinds yes. of stuff. Mommy, you know what? You know what? And I go, what? <laughs> and I was I had such listening ears. I think my ears are like bigger than my nose. <laughs> I'd listen and go, uh-huh. 
uh -huh. and in their mind, you know what I'm saying? I always tell this story too, June. We tell Sean, apparently, not no, not recalling in my own brain, he, we must have said to Sean, he was a baby, we must have said, Sean, you're the cutest boy in the whole wide world. Well, one day he went to my friend Judy Hardy's house, and she had her, his friend Jimmy, and Judy must have said, you know, your mom thinks you're the cutest boy in the whole wide world. And he came home, and he, he was little, like four, and he goes, Mom, and Judy said, I'm the cutest boy in the whole wide world, but I looked around. And not and I roared laughing, Judy. I said, Judy, that was it was wow. so hilarious. He is the cutest boy in the wide world to me. You know what I'm saying? To me. And it was yes. so so yes. precious. And don't we do that as as children of God? We go like, God loves me a lot. Or we go like this, where'd God go? <laughs> yeah, I thought he liked me. Tell trust that. With did you have any of those where you feel like you exaggerate or you made someone I don't know. I just I I didn't really recount on that one a lot. Yeah, you know what? It was interesting to me what you said. And what I'd like to say is children are always truthful. <laughs> they are always truthful. And the truth still hurts sometimes. <laughs> what he said, he looked around and he said, that's not true. <laughs> you know, if we could all be that way, that would be so cool because he did that so naturally. Yeah. And we love it. We like and the and children you, do that. Mommy and people are always smarter than their mother, always. You know, it's every, every mom, mom, you're wrong again. It's just cute. I, that's why I love children, June. I think that yes. children are honest in a in a heart-touching way. And then adults yes. sometimes are honest in like a, they may be out to get you, you don't know it. You're like, oh, like, oh, <laughs> we went to Florida, they used to say, when you beat people, I mean, I'm sorry, some people used to tell us this in church. Because some were really liberal and we're really conservative, and some were really walking with churchgoers and they weren't really walking with Lord. And they go, Maybe you've got to go like this under your breath, friend or foe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You meet them and in their conversation, you know, if they're, they're just saying, yeah. you know, like the pickle jar didn't hurt. Um, we have to be so aware that everyone is not our friend. This is one big point we made, and everyone is not going to like us. And some people will go farther than just they don't like us. They may be out to get us. And we have to be aware that we have an enemy out there. And someone that said within our own neighborhood, our own, you know, people. And that's sad to me, June. Sad. Being a Catholic school girl, I just go like this to myself. I thought everybody loved Jesus. And then when I found out, June, I was probably in high school. I found if I'd be like, I'm a Catholic school girl and I love Jesus, I wouldn't have any friends. It was very important to me yeah. to be popular. So I was like, okay, yes, how are you doing? I don't, I didn't mention Jesus. I did not. I just did not. But we have to believe that God keeps healing us each day. So on that, have you ever had that experience where someone exaggerated or you exaggerate and, and you, when the person said back to you, I looked around and I'm not, you feel like, man, did I even, <laughs> did I lie to my child? You know, I mean, my parents helped me out with that my, as well. Yeah. And now I'm thinking about exaggeration in my, in my, when I am. Um, I think my uh, probably exaggeration would be on uh, on uh, my weight, okay? Because because of my thyroid, okay. and I think that I may be exaggerating too much on trying to uh, control it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, looking at the truth. Um, you know, I want to, uh, I want to be able to eat what I can and I can't. Mm -hmm. And like, so yeah. I have to, look at that. I have to look at that. And the more I, I see you can eat this, but you can't eat that. And I look at the truth, then I don't exaggerate. I have to look at the reality of the fact that um, I can't eat like other people. And mm -hmm. uh, it's not poor June. Not okay. self pity. Not you don't flip into any of that. Know what I'm saying? I just okay. have to say, okay, this is what I have to do. No exaggerations. <laughs> so that's the line to ourselves thing, right? That's like the line to ourselves. Because exactly. I have to do the same thing. I don't like healthy exactly. foods that much, and I've had to change over to healthy foods because you know I want. I'm 71, and I'm thankful to be that, but I don't want to be like dying early. And I, my mom lived to 97, and when she was around us, I go, man. I want to live to nice. I just want to die. I love stories, my age group, and I want to die young, like 
love story. But truly, I want to live till, as long as I can because there's so much work to be done in the kingdom. It's not like I want to be alive to, Right. uh, I don't know, but I want to be alive because there's God needs humble people. They're going to say, here I am, Lord. What can I do for you today? Not what can I do for me? Because that's like the temptation. And so I had to learn to eat healthy. And that it is it is hard. I don't know if you have certain foods you can eat and can't eat, but I do. And so I, I, I mean, I went on diet when mom was here. We ate like little cookies. I was never a cook eater. I love his candy here and there. And then we put on weight. We're like, we blame mom for everything. <laughs> it was mom. That's what we, you know. And the truth was, the <laughs> truth that's of it. That's truth it. is, and we're like, whoa. The I never ate cookies. Honestly, I didn't. I was, and I liked chips for a long time, as you know. And then I had to give up the chips because I, I feel better about myself when I, I do feel better when I, I feel like I'm healthy. I'm a little person. I'm short. I can't beat the person that other people may eat a whole burger. I mean, a whole whopper or something. And I would never even be able to do that. So it's not because I don't want to. I couldn't do it. But I'm just eating the wrong foods can be as dangerous and as hard as. Why to eat something you say, I'm saying say no to myself. The wrong foods can get you. And if you can't, I'm always injured, Judy. Not always from now on. I hope I'm going to walk in health and peace. Uh, but if you can't walk or go to the gym or do what you want to do, and that was my biggest trial with my, you know, arthritis. I want to go to the gym, which you should be with arthritis. But I'm right now I have a broken shoulder, shoulder in three places. And I'm just holding my, I'm holding my neck up just to like, look like I can, do that but it's it's a painful time so you you can't do what you want to do always in life isn't that a lesson everyone's not gonna like us you can't do whatever you want Yes. we're walking with Yes. jesus you know the more you get close to him you begin to understand we read we're reading the saints june and they love suffering they're going i just pray for suffering i go what and they're going like if it knocks our door if suffering no, we're not answering we've had enough suffering with Karen, enough Right. losses and we are Yes. done Let us have a break, right? And they're praying for something. We have to go, oh, wow, Yes. we're not there yet. <laughs> like a No, little kid. that's Are we there yet? Are we there? God, are we there? And then he begins to reveal the night. Look at this. And you go, whoa, was that really me? <laughs> it is hard. It's hard. Because you go back to some people and repent. Like when I said that, I was off. Don't think you're like, you don't really want to always go to the person and say, When I said that or did that, I could go to June or, or Anna, the girls on the intercessor team. I could go to them and say, by the way, I was off on that. Like we were off on the Dave. We didn't know if it was Dave, Judy Hartney's brother. You know, we were trying to pray for a guy named Dave and it was the wrong Yes. Dave. I was praying for the wrong Dave. Yes. So Yes. you have to go back to, you go back to those girls. They won't go, what an idiot. What's wrong with her? Did she read the email? Did she scroll up? Well, <laughs> Right. so it's Right. like that. So we have to be, we're going to close this off in a minute, but we had fun, June. I've enjoyed speaking about the tongue and speaking about, Yes. first of all, deception. Yeah. Secondly, Half truths like my my clothes and the closet, this new dress, I saw the closet. And then lastly, speaking about um da -da -da -da, exaggeration. So we get we're gonna have to what finish it up and then close it out. So do you want any more last thoughts Okay. you had? Not the last thought to the whole Well, thing, but do, do we get any what updates I'd like on to say, my last thought, okay? okay, that my last thought is this. We all lie. <laughs> we all uh, do these things. Some do more than others. Okay. But the thing that we need to do is read this book once a year and be reminded and pick whatever it is that, that says, okay, you need to work on this and do it. Uh, it's not a point the finger and you're a terrible person thing. It's a, uh, help become a better person for a while and get in the habit of articulately, articulately telling the truth. Watch people that are articulate. That's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and try not to flatter. But of course, you need to know that I'm going to do that. If I see your hair looks amazing, I'm a hairdresser. I'm going to freak out and love it. <laughs> and I'm not, I don't want anything. I just love hair. So knowing the difference between somebody that's flattering you, that's genuinely excited and someone that wants something you want to be on guard. But other than that, let's just be free and love each other the way we are. And that's my end statement. It's very good. If you're, I was going to read this as my end statement, June, see what you think. And if I read it before, just delete me. 
It's called The Power of Words. It's very short. I happen to see it. I don't even know who wrote it or why I had it, but Pat gave it to me. So I go, okay, he had a lot of scripture Ooh. as well. The Power of Words. A careless word may kindle strife. Mm. A cruel word may wreck a life. We know that. A bitter word may yes. hate still. A brutal word may smith and kill. A gracious word may smooth the way. A joyous word may light the day. A timely word may lessen stress. A loving word may heal and bless. And that's by the author, as you all know, unknown. <laughs> and it wasn't me. So it's unknown oh. author, but great words, right? So we want to be a blessing. Yes. Okay, Amen. Blessing. And have the words we say help lift the spirit and then not crash and burn. We don't want to do that to each other because we love each other too much. So Jude, how do they get a hold of you? If someone's uh, going to I am on Facebook. <laughs> I'm on Facebook as Claude Council, C-L-A-U-D-E <laughs> Council, <laughs> because somebody stole my husband's my husband's Facebook page and I stole it back. That and then if you it? come there with me, <laughs> if you come and become friends with me, then I will send you a message to join Women of Mercy's uh, Facebook page. And we now have 100 women. Uh, I'm very excited about that. That's, all a, vision over. that's a vision for Yeah. Okay. So yes. Yes. Shout, out to yes. shout out to Women of Mercy. It's Ellen and June. Say hello. And so what else? Is that all the way they get a hold of you? Is there another? That's your email. Your email is Women of Mercy or? My women of mercy 777 at gmail.com. Perfect. And I was going to say that please sign on the YouTube channel. I have 12 calls. June has been on a couple times more lately with me because I was worked out. And I have 12 co hosts, and the, it is called um, on YouTube Ellen Mongan. And it's Go Tell the World. And so I would let June have one more last word because I really do want you to summarize. But I, you can hold of me by wow Ellen at yahoo.com. And I also write for Catholic Mom and the Southern Cross occasionally when I beg. I exaggerate. <laughs> exaggerate beg. Um, so June, how can we sum up the show though? How can you sum it up? Like a real summary, like a, we talked on so many things. A real you. summary. We we have um we have tongue issues. <laughs> we have we have issues if we're anger, angry. And we use our tongue when we're angry, and that can kill and destroy a relationship. And we have love that comes from our tongue, and that brings life. And to me, if I had to say anything at the end, Jesus, help us give your love through our tongues. Amen. Amen. And bless everyone that watches this show. In yes. Jesus' name. And so y'all buy the book if you want to follow along with your own information. It's called 30 Days to Tame the Tongue. We'll be on again next week, June, next week. So we'll do it once a week instead of yeah. once a month, every day. Yeah. We're not, we'll, we'll do it 30 weeks to tame the tongue because it will take that long. And June, I encourage you to not be deceptive, not be um, half-truth, and not be exaggeration. So uh, from June Castle and Ellen Mong and I Go Tell the World, I'm going to say, Bye-bye and have a great day. We'll see you again really soon. Work on the tongue. It'll <laughs> it'll flatter someone along the way, but we hope it will just lift them up to life, new life in Christ. And so Amen. without any further ado, may God be blessing you in Jesus' name. It's, uh, it's it said record. Now you're recording again. <laughs>